Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to From the Tips, the Golf Magic podcast, the very first one. My name is Harry Benjamin, and alongside me are two men who know a lot about golf. Golf Magic editor Andy Roberts and PGA Tour writer Matt Shivers. On the show today, a recap of the Tournament of Champions, Rory McIlroy's future, that Scott Stallings master's mistake, the ever-controversial Live Golf. The guys give you their tips for the Hero Cup and Sony Open. And we'll be joined by a two-time winner in 2022 from the DP World Tour, Ewan Ferguson. So, it's a lot to get through for a first show. The recording date is Monday, the 9th of January, 2022. No, it's not. It's 2023. I'm still in 2022. (laughs) Happy New Year. Well, carry on. Happy New Year. Uh, Can we still say that? I'm still in 2022, clearly, Andy, but it is 2023. Uh, First full week of January. I'm not ready to go back to work yet. I love it. I love it, mate. No, that's it, mate. Uh, I was just going to say you must have been uh, must have been happy with your brief appearance on BBC Sports Personality of the Year over the Christmas <laughs> period. Yes, no, that was my Christmas present. Uh, for uh, for yeah. those who, who who don't know me, uh, I, I do a lot of work in in motorsport and, and Formula One in particular. I do some of the BBC's Formula One commentary, and I got I think it was about four seconds of my voice on the <laughs> F1 montage on the Sports Personality it. of the Year. So uh, I wasn't even expecting. I was literally watching it on the TV, and I literally lost my mind in my living room. I was Amazing. like, "Hang on, that's me! Oh my I'll god, say, I'll I'll say, I'm I'll, in that I'll, big room." I've heard that voice. I've heard that yeah. voice. Yeah, so that was that was a pretty high. So I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think you. I mean, you almost got as much coverage as golf on the entire on, on its entire segment of a, of a two hour fifty minute broadcast. You know, golf got a grand total of sixty four seconds, which, in my eyes, is just shocking. Uh, looking at golf social media, I think a lot of other guys found found that the same way. You know, Matt Fitzpatrick. A fantastic season last year, obviously becoming the first Englishman to win the US Open since Justin Rose in 2013. I think he was just the eighth Englishman to win the US Open in, in US Open history. Uh, you know, gets 30 seconds of, of coverage on that. McElroy got 30 seconds of coverage for returning to world number one. It was such a huge year in golf. Um, and Fitzpatrick, just to rub salt into the wings, didn't even get a nomination for the, the main award, which was, was embarrassing in my eyes. Um, don't know what you feel about that, Matt. Yeah, is I mean, yeah, I, I thought it was a shame. There weren't there weren't many um there weren't many nominees, were there? There were only about six or seven nominees. I think there were six. Yeah. yeah so I, six, I mean, yeah. there used to be about twelve or even more. I think so. Yeah, mm. it is a shame. I think I think with sports personality, I think I think golf has been um, underrepresented throughout the years. I think only two two golfers have ever won it. I think the last one was Nick Faldo, and that was it, yeah. obviously yeah. donkey's years ago, eighty nine. I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. I think the last golfer to be nominated was Danny Willett, which is about six, six, seven years ago. So it is, mm. it is a shame. Um, I'm a big fan of Matt Fitzpatrick. I think he definitely deserves to be nominated. Absolutely. Um, mm. But I think that's, I think it just sort of represents where golf is with sports personality. It's just not really a sport a that shame, gets recognised it really by it. It's a shame. I mean, just I know the world is, world is slightly different now, but you know, before I had the luxury of Sky Sports back in the day, you know. There'd be six events on BBC during the, during the yeah. the course of the year. You know, you'd have all four days of the Masters, the Open. You'd have the Ryder Cup. You'd have the Volvo PGA, which is obviously now the BMW PGA. Uh, you'd have the Cisco World Match Play at the back end of the year. That's not even a tournament anymore. Uh, and you'd have the Scottish Open at Loch Lomond. And, and those those were the six tournaments as a kid that drew me in. You know, um, but now as we say, look, all the that you get a few highlights packages of, of the Masters and the Open and the BMW, but it's in the in that graveyard shift as we call it. You know, eleven to twelve at night, kids are tucked up in bed. They haven't really got access to it unless they've, as I say, got the luxury of a twenty four seven package on on Sky Sports Golf. But not everyone's as fortunate as that, and it's just a shame. It really is a shame. Well, that's a good point, isn't it? Because actually, you know, we see it in multiple sports. Once they go behind a paywall, no matter, you know, I think we could all agree that sky sports coverage of sport is pretty damn good yeah. oh, but fantastic. once yeah. it goes behind a paywall you lose a, a lot of viewers and a lot of opportunities as well so i'm imagining based off of that and you think that's that's one of the main reasons for you know a bit of a lack of popularity for for the sport yeah absolutely i i, I think that that has to be it matt i, I don't know about you but i, I just um it, it's a shame because bbc radio 5 love Live coverage is superb. I don't know if you've ever listened to it. I've been mm. in, I've been on a motorway listening to, to Ryder Cup, the Open, the Masters. It's superb. You know, led by Ian. I've, Carter, I've had to do live updates during an F1 race on golf. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, absolutely. 
Um, you know, the guys like John Inverdale leading the coverage on Radio 5 Live, it's superb. Um, the BBC Golf website is superb. But from a broadcast perspective, it's almost like they've just thrown their toys out the pram just because of Sky. Sky's got the rights now and they've just gone, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I mean... D- D- Matt, Matt, sorry, Matt, do you right? think golf needs something like a like a drive to survive, like a, a, a docu sort of series that kind of dramatizes a, a bit more to, to make it more engaging and, and aim at maybe a younger audience too. Well, we're, we're very much on the verge of that. Um, the it, It's it's coming. It's coming in, oh. apparently in February. Um, it's coming. Um, don't know how many episodes it will be, but yeah, it's going to be fully on the PGA Tour on sure. Netflix, um, very much based on Drive to Survive. Um, the sort of dramatic, the d- dramatic elements of what we've seen with the F1 show. Um, so it's good that golf is following that trend of these cutting edge sports documentaries, similar to the Last Dance as well. Um, I think tennis mm. is getting its um, a, a similar sort of insightful docu series as well. Um, Nearly every sport, I think, is having something done in the next yeah, year or so. Yeah. Well, like, well, like <laughs> I said, I think it, I think it will massively help golf. For example, when the Drive to Survive um, series came out, a lot of a lot of people I know who didn't really um, involve themselves with Formula One now now absolutely love it. So hopefully that same thing will happen to golf. And they couldn't obviously couldn't have chosen a better year yeah. considering the drama and the controversy that happens in twenty twenty two. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, look, uh, I think we've already given it a bit more than 64 seconds uh, than Sports <laughs> Personality gave it, but uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, so strap in. Uh, we've got lots more uh, to talk about. Um, and why don't we start properly uh, with a recap, of course, of a brilliant first uh, PGA Tour event of 2023 at the Tournament of Champions in Hawaii. One, and Andy predicted this uh, on our test podcast that we did last uh, week by John Ram. Uh, yeah. But that came, didn't it, Andy, after a bit of a disaster from Colin quite, Morikawa. Quite incredible. Um, I mean, UK fans, if they did go to sleep last night at probably what 11.30 when Morikawa held a six-shot lead and they woke up this morning, they probably couldn't believe their eyes. Um, I think after the first hole, he had a nine-shot lead over John Rahm. Uh, I think even by the the twelfth hole, he had a six-shot lead over John Rahm. Um, but really, holes twelve to sixteen kind of just blew the whole tournament up. Uh, Rahm played holes twelve to fifteen in five under par. Morikawa played fourteen, fifteen, sixteen in three over par. Uh, an eight-shot swing on those holes, uh, and that's ultimately what decided the tournament. But um, you know, fair play to John Rahm. It was a 10 under par round of 63. Absolutely incredible. But you have to feel this is one that got away for Colin Murakawa. Um, you know, being that far ahead, a two-time major champion. Um, and I just hope it doesn't sort of... He's, he's, a, he's a strong character, but I just hope this doesn't scar him for this season because I think what we saw for 54 holes was was the Morikawa that we first saw when he, he burst out this, you know, burst on the scene with, with two major victories. Um, but I just hope this doesn't kind of, you know, dent his confidence in any way. Um, Cause I thought 54 holes superb and pleasingly on the greens, he was, he was brilliant. You know, um, I've got a stat here. I think he was, he's 222nd in strokes game putting heading into last week. And he was first for 54 holes last week. So he's putting and he changed from his saw grip that he was using last year. To, so he's gone back to a standard grip. Um, and he looked looked really good, but it just shows you, doesn't it? It's never easy winning on the PGA Tour, even on a, especially on a Sunday. No, well, just unbelievable. Like, like I said, with his short game and his putting, he, he led every stat. He led sort of mm. not just with putting, he led in sand saves, um, sort of scrambling, yeah. and with his putting, it was strokes gained, three putt avoidance. He led all of it, um, which looked promising considering that was a part of his game. I think last season that sort of sort of lacked. He started working with. Um, with Stephen Sweeney, isn't he? With, with, with his passing, but you just sort of assume. Yeah. I, I said to my sort of I said to my flatmates before the second round, last round started. If he's got a six shot lead, and on a on a high scoring course, you could just you could could have said to himself, if I just shoot four under mm. today, if I just shoot four under, that should mm. make me un, unreachable, untouchable. Um, then yeah. someone would have to shoot about twelve under to reach to reach me, but. I mean, incredible from John Rahm to, to, bogey, to bogey the first hole and then make another nine yeah. birdies and an eagle is, is incredible golf. But I mean, Absolutely. it is is yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's an awful it's an awful collapse from from Morikawa. It's not the first time either. He done it um, at twenty twenty one Hero yeah. World Challenge winning a five shot lead. 
and he and he squandered that mm-hmm. to become world number one. So, despite being a two time major champion, it is it is concerning how he clearly fit, he clearly wilts under pressure. Well, yeah. He clearly you know it's with with mm. big leads. If if he just shot three or four under, I know it's easy for easier said than done, but he is a top player. <laughs> yeah. um, Sat here, sat here saying that. Just some, yeah, just strange, some strange shots, wasn't it? Like 14, knifing it out the back, you know, from the bunker. All right, it was a, is a tough shot. You know, that 50-yard bunker shot is one of the hardest shots in golf. Um, so you can maybe let him off for that. But, you know, then to chunk a wedge shot on, on 15 right in front of it. You know, Paul Azinger literally called it as it happened during the coverage. Yeah. You know, because he said it was a tight <laughs> lie. It's not his favourite shot in golf. And look, he duly chunked it and, and went on to bogey and then came up short on 16, couldn't get up and down. Um, and that's now, I think it's 18 months now since he last won on the, the PJ Tour. And it's not a big concern, but it, it might be becoming a bit of a concern, especially if you're going to start throwing away some leads. But um, look, we all know look, he's an incredible ball striker. I think he'll, I think he'll certainly get a, a win this season. I think he'll get back on the board. Yeah. But um, you just hope, as I say, you, I'll go back to it. You just hope it doesn't sort of mentally scar him this this year. You'd like to see him sort of kick on. So if it, it, it might have become the tournament. Well, that's the th- sorry, sorry, Harry. It, it, it might become the tournament that... Um, the PGA Tour wanted mm. to be fair. I mean, a runaway might have been a bit boring. Yeah, um, as, as, certainly as it's the yeah. first elevated event of the season, well, of, of, of this year. Um, absolutely. The PGA Tour mm. may, might probably would have been happy with the amount of top players that were out there. It, it was a, a tournament for top players, obviously, but um, with mm. Homer, Ram, um, Morikawa, Fitzpatrick at the top of the leaderboards yeah, good. at a very sort of picturesque event, absolutely, yeah. um, venue in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, it, it, it probably was the tournament that that we're going to see more of, more of, um, in twenty twenty three, as they're all going to be required to play at these events. So in terms of excitement, it was probably it's mm. it, it a great week, but um, you don't really like to see the excitement play out in that sort of fashion, do you? No. Well, I think you know, obviously, they probably all they would have liked was maybe Rory McIlroy to have, mm. to have joined them. I think that's probably all they would have wanted to, to sit on top of that. He obviously had the, the opportunity to to um, to play in that tournament, turned down the invite. Uh, he's only played in that tournament once uh, in 2019. The tie for fourth, fair shot 16 under. Uh, so it probably wasn't a massive surprise. But I know when when I spoke to him at the DP World Tour Championship in November, and we asked him about his schedule, what was coming up, he said, "Look, I am." thinking about starting my year in Hawaii. So it was a little bit of a surprise because he obviously was thinking about it, especially, as you say, being a, an elevated event. Um, and that why, means why now... Why doesn't he historically go? Do you know, I, I, I'm really not sure what, what it is. I think, you know, just to have that extra bit of bit of time, mm. I would say probably testing new equipment as well. I think you've got to throw that into the mix. Um, we're going to see McElroy. He, he's going to start in Dubai in two weeks. You're going to see him with a uh, brand new tailor-made driver in the bag. Maybe he just wants a little bit more time to, to tinker and stuff. But I think, you know, McElroy had a very taxing year last year. You think on and off the course with leading the line again, you know, for the PJ Tour against Live Golf. Um, all right, he's done, you know, he's let his golf do the talking, but away from it as well, you know, he's um, he's had a lot going on. So I think, you know, I don't think we can really deny him a, a few weeks extra rest, certainly going into this year. And I think he's going to have one of his best ever years, I'm going to be honest. Well, well, let's let's dive into that, shall we? Mm. Uh, you segued so nicely into it. What do you think uh, <laughs> is in store, Matt, um, for McElroy uh, this year? Will he finally break that that nine year winless run for a fifth major title? He's still uh, ranked number one, just by, from Scotty Scheffler. So, uh, only just though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is a shame with with Roy that you know most most years since two thousand fourteen, you, 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 most people would have predicted he'd, he'd win a major. And now we're sort of nine years down the line. And he still doesn't, still doesn't have it a fifth. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's more wins in store for him. He got a few last season um, while while um, juggling the live golf controversy, while juggling uh, sort of meetings with Tiger Woods and sort of initiatives with the PJ Tour in the background. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be another good year. I'd, I hope he wins another major because I'm I've, I've grown into a, I've grown into a really big Roy McIlroy fan. I don't see why he wouldn't be. He's He's um gonna 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 be what once once the day he hangs up his clubs he's gonna be one of the greats I imagine um and yeah well yeah. he's he's returning to Hoy Lake in 2014 where he won the Open so he'll be back there this year which will hopefully bring back some good memories um obviously the Masters is is the thing that he he hasn't won yet which would c- complete the career Grand Slam but I don't know I don't know I, I feel like he I feel like at these major championships he's always having to 
justify himself um, with the expe- amount of ex- expectation that's on him. Um, but I assume another two or three more wins for McElroy and then we'll just have to see it in the majors. We've, we've been here before, haven't we, with the majors with McElroy? Mm, well, look, Matt, I, I think he's going to have a huge year. I've got to be honest. I, I think this is going to yeah. be one of his <clears throat> one of his very, very special years. Uh, just love what I saw towards the back end of last year. I think he's just in a very good place right now. I think, you know, he's married, had his, had his, had his child. Uh, you know, life is good for Roy McIlroy. Um Seems in a good place on on the on the greens as well. You know, it's kind of the putter's really been maybe holding him back. You could say you could argue his wedge game has not been not been quite as sharp. But again, towards the back end of last year, I just liked what I saw. Um, and you can clip this, Harry. Absolutely clip it. But and I'm, I might look very stupid come the end of this seat, this year. And I'm sure we might put this in an outtakes video. Or something. Hang on, let let me timestamp right. it. Uh, so yeah. just, <laughs> but I I think Roy Mako is going to win two majors this year. I think it's going to be a blockbuster year. Uh, he still won't get a nomination for Sports Personality of the Year. Even oh, no. If he does that. But I think he's going to win two majors this year. I think he's going to win. I think he's going to complete the career Grand Slam at the Masters. I think he'll become, the, you know, the sixth uh, player in the modern era to to complete the career Grand Slam, joining Saras and Hogan, player Nicholas and Woods. And then I think he's going to go on, as, as Matt just said there, I think he's going to go on and win the Open at World Liverpool. He's had success there in 2014. Loves the course. So two majors for me, for Rory. Be a, a handful of, of PJ Tour wins as well, um, yeah. And I think he, he's going to remain world number one come the end of the year. But we'll see. I might look very stupid come the end of the year, and we go. We'll be going. What happened to Macro in the majors? But <laughs> again, I believe this is the year, and he and he ends it after nine years. And and just on that, you know, when when we did speak to him in, in Dubai in November, you know, we asked him how how would you assess your twenty twenty two and. He was like, look, great. Obviously won record FedEx Cup title on the PJ Tour, won a record uh, fourth race to the vice series, you know, um, title. You know, li- life life was good, but there's just, you could just tell he was so gutted that he threw that, well, didn't throw the open away, but Cameron Smith, you know, steamrolled through and, and took that off him because he did really have one hand on the Claret Jug heading into that back nine. You know, a, a landmark 150th Open at the home of golf St Andrews. What a, you know, what a, a week that was for, for everyone. But he, he kind of looks back on that and thinks, you know, wish I'd won that. So the majors are just everything for McIlroy. And I think we're just going to see, um, I think we're going to see a very special year for McIlroy. Let's, let's, let's hope anyway. Let's hope. Well, Andy's uh, put him, mm. dug himself a hole there. Matt, do you I want to dig yourself a hole big, as well? Or, uh... big, well, I'd, I'd like <laughs> to. I'd like to. Andy's a bit more bold than me. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, to, to be fair, I, th- I think the Open is a really good chance because he's, he's won it at Royal Liverpool already. Yeah. Um, so to be fair, I think that is a really mm. good opportunity for him. Um, but uh, Augusta, he's not really... He's not. I know he came second last year, but there was no point where anyone, anyone thought he could win. He was still, he was still miles behind Scheffler. And Scheffler still won by three shots, having hmm. you no know, five putted the last uh, green or whatever he did. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. To be fair, yeah, I'll say you win. I'll say you win the Open, but the other three are up in the air. Okay. <laughs> yeah, keeping it a bit bit vague. Uh, but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll clip that out, come back to it at the end of the year, and see how that all played out. Uh, but uh, talk of the Masters and my favourite story. Um, I mean, it's only the ninth of January, but it's my favourite story of the year so far. It might might well be till the end of the year. Uh, and Scott yeah. Stallings uh, and the Masters mix up which i think is absolutely hilarious you must have seen it on twitter uh, scott Stallings tweeting literally have been checking the mailbox five times a day and then i got this random dm yesterday from another scott stallings with the set with the wife with the same name of jennifer who had accidentally received his master's invitation how does that happen <laughs> surely there's there's somebody in the master's <laughs> hr department who has scott stallings address like i know same name okay fine it's a bit niche same wife's name as well but come on but the nice thing is that uh, the other scott stallings i don't want to say the fake scott stallings because he is a real person i think he's, he's a real estate in uh, he's a real estate agent in atlanta mm. um but he is uh, he has been invited by the 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 golf uh, the real golfer scott stallings uh to the masters uh for uh for to watch the practice and have dinner as well so a nice nice story there but how does that happen andy how what has that ever happened before 
That's the first time I've ever heard that. I think it's incredible. <laughs> I think just on that, just to make Scott feel maybe a little bit better, I'm still Golf Magic's still waiting for its uh, Masters yeah. invite. Just just to the media center, not 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 even not even to play. Just just get get through the gates. So hopefully one day it'll happen for us. But uh, you know, I'm still waiting for my invite. Um, it will. But it no, will happen. Quite. Let's hope. Let's hope. Um, quite incredible, really, wasn't it? It's um, you know, poor Scott sat there waiting day by day and he's seeing all his peers posting it on twitter and he must have been getting quite anxious oh he, he must have been and someone slides into his dms and says here you go you're off <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I think he's absolutely brilliant i think i think it's recent he's he's, he's actually he's messaged the other scott stallings to come um, yeah. to the practice round so that's yeah that's quite cool i was hoping maybe he might let him caddy for him in the par three contest or something like that it might be a nice little story oh, but i guess potentially he doesn't he doesn't seem like it, he's that nice <laughs> no it probably let most of them let most of them let their, their wives caddy or the you yeah. know the kids or whatever but um so he, that might be not a nice thing to do to be fair, the, 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 the fake scott stallings has done very very well out of this like he's, it, done, very he's, well. he's done very well it, he, had, it. he had got an invitation he had no right to receive and now he's now he's get, getting to chance to go to augusta <laughs> So I must say he's done very well out of it. He's done well. Absolutely. My my favourite part of of the message that the fake Scott Stalling gave to the real Scott Stalling, I'm a hundred percent sure this is not for me. I play, <laughs> but wow! <laughs> so no, you play a little bit of golf and then you're invited to the Masters. Yeah. Absolutely uh, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> can't wait. Great, well, great golf, little story. Great little story it's to start. Brilliant with. story. Uh, yeah, and great perfect. and great for Scott. Great for Scott as well. You know, this will be his third time at the Masters and. I think he last played in there in 2014, missed the cut. Um, he also played in 2012. He finished just inside the top 30. Um, you know, he's a three-time winner. He's kind of gone under the radar a little bit, Scott Stallings. Um, you know, obviously not won for, for nine years now. A bit like Macker in the majors, but it's, um, you know, there was a little mini resurgence for him last year, Scott. Um, I think he finished second in the BMW Championship, tie for fourth at the Charles Schwab and the John Deere. So there were signs of him returning, and he's obviously got the invite to the Masters eventually. Um, just finished. He's, I think he's just outside the top fifty in the world now. So he's, you know, he's 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 turning it on again. Um, and hopefully he'll have a a good week. Um, it'll be a memorable memorable one for him. That's for sure. Well, he's got some great PR out of this to kickstart the has. year, that's for sure. Um, so I won't be going too under the radar at the start of the year. <laughs> um, but another big point uh, surrounding Augusta right now uh, is that uh, eligible live golf players will be allowed to compete at the Masters. Um, Matt, is that the right call? Yeah, yeah, I think it definitely is. I think um, I think a lot of the time with this live golf controversy, the golf world has sort of descended into quite a lot of pettiness and quite a lot of playground antics um i think this is definitely the, the right the, the right thing to do um and hopefully hopefully um the masters or the augusta has sort of set the standard for the rest of the majors because if you if you're eligible and you've qualified and you meet the criteria if you're a certain if you've won a major in the last five years or if you've um if you're in the top 50 at the end of 2022 and you get world ranking points to be at a certain ranking before the week before the masters you get in and there's all the other sort of criteria. So if you meet the criteria, you have to qualify just because you've, you've joined the tour that no one, that no one likes uh, is, is pretty, is quite um I- I- irrelevant, isn't it? It, it? It's, I think it definitely is the right call. As I said, I think a lot of, a lot of the stuff we've seen between the DP world tour, PJ tour and, and live as well has been quite petty, has been quite unnecessary. So I'm pleased. Um, I'm pleased Augusta have sort of taken that decision to allow allow them all to come back. They did sort of allude to that they might make modifications in the future, um, but I sort of really hope that doesn't happen. I mean, if, if you're eligible, you're eligible. If, in my opinion, it, I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter what tour you play on. It doesn't matter yeah. where the money comes from to fund that tour. Whether you agree with whether you agree with the source of money or not, it's it's not relevant to your your eligibility for a major. In my in my opinion. No, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of everyone's got their their thoughts about Liv, but I think with this one, I don't think you can you can really uh, bemoan what they've done. At the end of the day, you know, it's Masters is a special week. Um, it's it's a limited field event anyway, um, and it's you know, it's run by Augusta National. It's, it's nothing to do with the PJ Tour. All right, it's it's a FedEx Cup counting event, but um, yeah, they could do what they want. I think they made the right decision, as you say, Matt. Yeah, they've they've earned the right to be there and. Um, let them crack on, you know. But for me, the, the bigger issue is is obviously what happens with 
Liv and the OWGR this year. It's um, it's obviously been a huge talking point in 2022. It's not going to be going away anytime soon. Um, so we'll just have to see what happens there, really. But uh, yeah, that's that's the big issue for uh, certainly for Liv Gold for the minute. Well, that's something. Well, I, I hate to. Oh, no, go on, Matt. Well, that's something. That, that's that, that's something else that I think. Um, they would be entitled to as long as they meet criteria. It, 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 it's just all about criteria, isn't it? It's, um, if if yeah. you if you meet the average field size um, requirements of I think it's seventy five players, if you provide a pathway from the sanctioned tour, so uh, I think it's a men's tour in this instance. Mm-hmm. If you if you provide the Q school, if you if you have a certain amount of events, it's got to be in existence for a year, I believe, as well. So as long as you meet the criteria, then 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 why shouldn't they get well drinking points but it's just the fact that sort of the arrogance of some of the players to sort of expect it to come overnight mm-hmm. and expect it to come um the next morning after an application to the OWGR that's what sort of um yeah that's what I found quite baffling but there's not again with the yeah. same with the major exemptions there's no reason why the OWGR points shouldn't come for them as long as they are, are an eligible eligible mm-hmm. tour and match the same or tick the same boxes as all the other tours yeah, I, I just you know, but at the end of the day, I, look, I think they, I think they're gonna get points, but I think in their current format, it has to be limited points. I don't think you can give them full amount of points. Mm. You know, the forty-eight man yeah. events as it is, the technically exhibition tournaments, uh, they play fifty-four holes. They need to be seventy-two holes. They need to have a cut. They don't have a cut. You know, rules are rules. Like everything in life, you can't just cut corners and go where are my points just because we've got some of the best players in the world. Um, yeah. And, and I'll go back to it. I, I still find it amazing that some players like Dustin Johnson can take 150 million um, and, and, and maybe be like, we don't know what conversations took place there, but you know, was he told, oh, Dustin, look, you're going to get points. Don't worry about it. You just take your money. You, you'll get points eventually. Or was he told, look, you will definitely get points. It's, for me, it should have been all signed off everything, you know, because it's a huge issue at the end of the day. Look at Dustin. He's, he's nearly outside the top 50 in the world. You know, Dustin Johnson, uh, he's not mm. nowhere near there. He's a top five player in my eyes. Like, it, yeah. it's just crazy. So the, the world rankings right now, just, you might as well just throw them up in the air. Um, I still find it funny that John Rahm's fifth. He's won three times in the last five five starts yeah, and he's still is. fifth. The, the guy can't get off fifth spot. Yeah. And he's playing the golf of his life. Like, it's just madness. There is a, there, um, there is a but look, Oh, there's plenty of faults, plenty of faults with it. Um, but for me, I don't think they deserve it right now. But I think they will get points. And as you touched on there, Matt, you know, it, it needs to be, they probably have to wait a bit longer. You know, Liv started in June last year. Uh, I think, I think some people say it's a minimum of 18 months. You've got to wait mm. till you even get, you know, in with a chance. So that would take you through to the end of this year. They might be waiting until 2024. And I, I genuinely think this is why you're not seeing any new. PGA Tour stars go to live golf at the minute because they're all waiting for the world ranking yeah. points. And when the, when the ranking points get decided and they go, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be in all the majors, you're gonna get your points, you can take all your money. Then you might see you might see players like Cantley and Chauffle that guys have been linked actually go there. But right now they've gone. You know what? This is a little bit a bit vague. We don't know what's going on. So um, I can see why some of them are, are just taking their time with the decision rather than rushing like DJ's done, like Cam Smith, Bryce, and Brooks. Um, mm. Maybe they've maybe they've gone too early. Some of these guys. We'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, that's that's my take on it. Anyway. Well, the other thing, of course, is that still no in the UK at least uh, rights deal confirmed for yeah. how to watch it. Either Sky, B- BT, yeah. all said no, uh, reportedly. So uh, could it be on free mm. to air? Sounds a bit too controversial for the BBC, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see who picks that we'll up. Uh, let's uh, let's move on though, because the first live golf event isn't until February anyway. So we have a yep. bit of time uh, until the Saudi back tour gets underway for its second season. Uh, let's move on to uh, this week though uh, mm. on the DP World Tour and. It's brand new Hero Cup, an inaugural match play event on the DP World Tour, initiated by the 2023 European Ryder Cup captain Luke Donald. Uh, Andy, are you excited for this one? Very excited. Yeah, no, I think this is. Um, I think this is going to be a good little week. It's obviously it's Friday to Sunday, um, so there's going to be uh, one set of foursomes, one set of four balls, one set of singles. So pretty simple. Not as big as a Ryder Cup. Um, but this is Luke Donald's idea, you know, the, the 2023 European Ryder Cup, t- Cup captain. This is his idea, um, and I think it's I think it's needed in a, in a way. You know, get all the guys together. Hopefully, we're going to see the the next generation of European talent come on through. With everything that's going on with Live Golf right now, and, and potentially those guys are not going to be part of the Ryder Cup. There is space for 
I think three or four like rookies in this team this this year. Um, I think for me, you can bank on probably eight or nine players being in the Ryder Cup right now. Um, for me, they'd be. Mm. I apologise if I miss someone, but I'm going to go McIlroy, Ram, Fitzpatrick, Hovland, Hatton, Lowry, Fleetwood, Thomas Peters. Is that eight? Probably throw Alex Norin in there as well as nine. And then I think the the three remaining players for the Ryder Cup could be very interesting. You know, you've got players like Adrian Moronk, Jordan Smith, uh, Bobby McIntyre's probably got a good mm. shout. Um, Seamus Powers probably got a good shout. There's a lot of guys out there. Um, one guy who will be joining us on the podcast shortly, I think, has a chance as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's wide open, but I think this is going to be a great, great little week. Tommy Fleetwood's Great Britain and Ireland team versus uh, Francesco Molinari's Continental <laughs> Europe team, um, and we'll just see. Because you know, I think at the end of the day, look, America get an, a slight advantage every year in the sense that they get the Presidents' Cup, so they get like they can build the bond every year. Whereas, mm-hmm. whereas for Europe, it comes around every two years, and it's we kind of miss the boat really um, trying to build those partnerships and. You look at how America absolutely dismantled Europe at Whistling Straits, um, you know, two years ago. But Steve Stricker had pairings just there. You you, you knew what he, who he was going to put together. He had partnerships ready, ready made, oven ready, as Boris would say. You know, they were just there. <laughs> Zander and Cantley, just dream team, and Spieth and Thomas, dream team. And Europe needs to find that now. And hopefully, something like this will maybe. Uh, Maybe we'll see that, but um, that's the hope, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, I think in terms of the right last year's or 2021's Ryder Cup team, uh, had a few uh, sort of mm. players that were definitely after that, 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 that was their last week of sort of a chance of glory, like people like Poulter and um, Westwood, and um, who else played? Well, those Garcia as well. So, the, 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 apart from maybe Sergio, those three. Mainly, we're not mm-hmm. going to be involved in 2023, realistically. So therefore, we need three sort of new, new, new people, new players. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Ideally, young players to um to step up. Mm-hmm. I think that's the strength in depth of the American team. That they're also young. That that team is going to be around for quite a while. So especially um, yeah. away Ryder Cups are going to be very, very tough. I think America have got that locked down for quite a few years now in terms of home Ryder Cups, but. This Hero Cup is a great chance to sort of mm. find them. Um, it's a great chance to find mm. those partnerships, find new players. Um, yeah, so I, don't, I can't see any bad in it. I think I think it's going to be a really interesting event. Um, and it's yeah. going to prepare these DP World Tour players for sort of high-pressure situations in match play events, which they could find themselves in at the Ryder Cup. Absolutely. Well, we'll come on to your tips in a little bit to uh, round off the show. But of course, I mean, Andy's already alluded to it. And talking of DP World Tour, I think it's time uh, to get on. A special guest joining us today is two-time winner on the DP World Tour and also competing on the Great Britain and Ireland team, captained by Tommy Fleetwood. It's a very warm golf magic welcome to Ewan Ferguson. Well, welcome, Ewan. Uh, Happy New Year. Thanks for taking the time uh, to join us. You're our very first guest on the very first Golf Magic podcast. It must be a career high for you. Honoured, (laughs) honoured. And excited to get get the year underway with a a bang. I was going to say, have you you had a good Christmas time to to reset and look forward to the new year? Yeah, definitely. I've recently made the the switch to moving out um, to Dubai. So I've been practising out here and kind of I think this is the best place for me to it's a kind of perfect hub for the kind of DP world tour and traveling around so it's been good and practice here every day I've got loads of friends that play on the tour as well that live out here so I can loads of people to play with and little, get little matches against Brilliant Ewan it's, uh, you're obviously out there this week uh, for the inaugural Hero Cup uh, is that something you're, you're very excited to be a part of? And, and do you think it was kind of maybe needed on the DP World Tour to get the guys together playing in match play golf? Yeah, um, well, I've played quite, quite a bit with kind of Bjorn and Molinari, Luke Donald and stuff this, uh, well, this la- last year now, um, towards the end of the year. And they were telling me that it was something that they've been really trying to get, um, a team event just just before the, before the Ryder Cup to try and work on different pairings and even just like 
it sounds so small, but it's quite a big deal for us guys, like parents, guys that use the same ball, stuff like that. It can all yeah. it can make quite a big difference when you're hitting a ball that you don't normally use or chip with or putt with or off the tee spin rates. You know, we all practice that much to get it to perfect it. So when it when it's out, it can make quite a big difference. So um, just to kind of get all that sorted, I think will be really good for the tour and and good for the captains and vice captains to see where where we all are and who works best together and also who's playing well and who's not playing as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you um yeah, so like like you said, I think the Hero Cup is sort of like a like a preparationary sort of event for the Ryder Cup, isn't it? It's to get sort of partnerships going and prepare people for potential selections. Um is the Ryder Cup something that's like a, an immediate target in your mind this year? Um I would say it's kind of sprung itself up on me. I wouldn't say that I was kind of felt like I was ready um, at the start of last year, but I think with with good golf and, and winning golf tournaments and putting yourself in contention regularly brings a lot of confidence. And um, in golf, things can can change pretty quickly. So um, it's definitely on the horizon for me now. And uh, it's always been a dream to play in major championships and play in big events and get myself in contention and, play under that kind of pressure. Uh, it's amazing. I've always played in team events as an amateur and loved it. So I'm excited to play a team event as a pro. And I think, uh, you know, if I play well enough this year and, and, and manage to get in the team, amazing. Um, either way, I'll, I'll be rooting for the team if I'm not. And, you know, in another two years' time, I'll be trying to get in the team again. I'm still pretty young, so I feel like I'm getting better all the time. And, you know, I'm, I'm working hard at it. Well, we'll certainly be uh, be keeping our fingers crossed to, and watching how it all plays out. And obviously, you had a great 2022 um, right at the start of 2023, and you're managed by Modest Golf, so I'm sure plans are well in place for how you want this year uh, to to pan out. But Modest Golf, obviously led by Nar Horan and, and Mark McDonald. Nar Horan, obviously very very well known, One Direction, a pop star, all this kind of stuff, but deeply loves his golf and is clearly passionate and knowledgeable. What's it like to to represent? Modest, modest golf, I should say, and, and especially someone like Niall. No, Niall has been been great for me. I definitely feel like I've got got confidence. Uh, just been close close with him as well, and um, he's very encouraging. Uh, and he, you know, playing golf with him, he he's th- he thinks you're amazing. He loves golf. He's obsessed with golf. He's always in your golf bag, looking at your clubs, and um, obviously it helps. He's got pretty good connections as well, so. That's helped me as well, even when I was on the challenge tour and maybe needing a bit more money to keep get, keep myself progressing, you know, sponsorship, stuff like that was always key, having someone like him and, and, and Mark behind me as well. So uh, he's been brilliant um, and got me invites to tournaments when I needed it, all these little things that just probably overlook. You don't realise how much um, they actually helps to get the experience, the playing experience, and then... Even last year, like playing with him in pro-ams, seeing how, what he needs to deal with with all these people around him. Um, you know, even me playing the pro-am as well, there with him, it's nerve-wracking with all these people there. And I think having, again, just that, to dealing with all these things just makes you better as a golfer, as a person, how to handle things. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's been awesome. And, you know, he's he lo- like, it's, like you said, he loves his golf. I put, put a story up at, um, at the... Emirates Golf Club this morning I was going to practice around for the Bad Desert Classic and he's like love that course need to get out there need to get play you know it's like straight away he's loves it so um, no it's really cool to to be close with him and, and kind of rub shoulders with guys like, guys like that Yeah, and just uh, just throwing it back to, to last year it's obviously a breakthrough year on the on the DP World Tour incredible year for you with, with two victories um, can you just talk us through that that week in Qatar, obviously a very special week. And I gave it large on the last green. I remember watching it. Uh, great part there. Um, you just talk us through how mm-hmm. special that was. And then and then to back it up again with at the ISPS hand, a little bit more of a comfortable win there, a three-shot win. But a very special year for you last year. Yeah, I think it all started in, in Kenya, really. I was leading by four after three rounds, finished eighth in the tournament and was totally heartbroken just with how it all panned out. I uh, just really struggled to deal with it. And then everyone kept telling me, oh, standing in good stead. And you just go, yeah, good one, like, standing in good stead. I feel like, feel like shit. But, uh, yeah, so it was it was a tough one. But um, then a few weeks later, I played the next couple of weeks in South Africa. I played all right. A few weeks later, I was, like, in sixth place in the last round. And 
it really did stand me in good stead because I was I felt like I knew how to deal with it. I knew all I had to do was kind of keep myself there or thereabouts, and if something magic happens, then great, uh, you win, and if it doesn't, then you don't win. You try and give yourself the next time, and I chipped in on sixteen for ego, pulled a big putt on eighteen, and that was it. It was, it was mine, and then obviously. Uh, a few months later, one in, in Northern Ireland at Modest's event. And that worked out amazing. Again, I led from the start, shot the course record on the first day, led wire to wire, one by three shots. Um, and again, just went off like everything that went in Kenya. Didn't I know I didn't need to do anything special. Just had to play my game. I, I got myself in the position by just playing my game. So why now all of a sudden I need to try and be amazing? You know, I just do my job. Fairways, greens, it sounds so simple, but that's the hardest thing to do in golf, isn't it? Hit the fairway, hit the greens. Yeah. So um, yeah. so that's what I just tried to do and went great. Got myself finished second and, and Denmark was incredible. You know, Ollie Wilson, again, there's another good example. I just tried to keep myself there and thereabouts. And Ollie Wilson had the magic the magic spark and at the end there and he won it. And, you know, it was, for me, it was like you win some, you lose some. He had the magic and, and Qatar had the magic. It was with me. So that's just the way it's golf serious. goes. And, yeah, it was it was it was it's been exciting. So, um, yeah, just and then just playing with these all the, the amazing golfers. These guys are in the top ten in the world, and um, watching them and just realizing like, oh, he does that so well. That's probably that's why he's so good. Um, I need to get better at that. You know, it's just just inspiring. And I, I love golf as well so much. So I find it really inspiring to try and watch these guys get better. You know, I'm always watching the golf channel and. Can't wait to get the range the next day. So yeah, I'm just a big golf fan too. I think I think to be fair, you and I think your emergence on the DP World Tour sort of come like an ideal time because it's a period when there's record prize money, there's more sort of tournaments in more countries. And another change is that is it I think next season the top ten in the rankings would get a pathway onto the PGA tour. Although although you although you just said you've sort of settled in Dubai, is is the PGA Tour and America a long-term target? Will you be hoping to get in the top 10 specifically to get a tour card next season? 100%. That's the ultimate goal. Playing the biggest tournaments against the best and playing the PGA Tour and playing the majors. Um, um, but yeah, I've based myself out here for the next couple of years because I think mm. I'll, it'll make me a better golfer and it'll give me the best chance to, to play well. I mean, I don't know where you guys are right now, but I bet you're... You wouldn't get much practice done, like if you're if it's your if it's your job to go out there. And Certainly not play. in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, just here, it's going to practice with chipping the, the grasses. It's tougher to deal with. Um, the the greens, the grain, and the greens, big long hard golf courses that you know back home you just wouldn't get as much, especially in the winter with the weather. So um, yeah, it's been that's why I've done it, but um. Yeah, ultimately the goal would be to play on the PJ Tour and and get myself in the top the top fifteen in the world. Which um, nice. yeah, I'm not saying I'm I'm at that level right now, but I believe that if I keep practicing hard and trying to do my best, that I could be I could be one day. Absolutely, and obviously, it's, you know, as, as Matt's just touched on there, a lot of perks on the DP World Tour tour right now. I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on on a, a comment last week from Matt Fitzpatrick's caddy Billy Foster. I don't know if you saw that comment. You know, saying the mm -hmm. DP World Tour is is soulless and dead. As a yeah. as a DP World Tour member, how how do you feel about you know that sort of comment? Um, from, from I feel like, like it he's, is, he's obviously been on tour a long time. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of sad to say that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, he's obviously an amazing caddy, and he's he's all over the world carrying for the best the best players in the world. He's he's and he's not seen them the talent coming through. I mean, the, even the challenge tour is so so strong right now and. The younger guys are so so much better, and that's why they keep they keep pushing through. I mean, um, we've probably not seen that as much just with like not being on the on the DP World Tour tour as much. But um, no, I mean I think, and at the same time, I I know what it means, but it's quite sad that the way it's went with like the Sergios and the Westers and Pilters. Like I said, I'm a big big golf fan as well, so um, you know, I I, I like seeing these guys around, but at the, at the same time, I've just got to concentrate on me and ultimately like if I'm playing good golf everything else takes care of itself and I'm happy and whatever anyone else thinks it's just everyone's opinion at the end of the day and you know like yeah. it's just my job and I'm just trying to get good at it and 
yeah, it's kind of disheartening to hear like some guys like that saying their thing. But you know, I just want to play good and right. and try and get the, get the ball in the hole and the less shots as possible. No, that's fine. Can I need, for me. Can I need look after yourself? Absolutely. Yep. Um, as, as well, you and um, as sort of get better, you get sort of equipment deals and things like that, don't you? You're a Cobra man. Um, yeah. assuming you've got the new the new Cobra big stick in your bag, how's it? How's it been going so far? How 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 do you think it will enhance your sort of long game this year? It's amazing, actually. The new driver, I, I went over to Miami with the Cobra team, Bryson and Lexi and all that, and tested it all with them, and it was incredible. Loved it straight nice. away. The week after I played Ned Bank, put it in the bag straight away, and then. Um, and the full new irons and the three with the rescue mm. just went a lot. Loved it, thought it was amazing. Finished thirteenth. So, what do you like the work? Is it the workability or the ball speeds or the what? What is it? The ball speeds and everything were a little bit more, but the feel off the face was definitely more. Um, I felt like it was more like a bit softer. I felt like it's easier to work, so I can kind of shape it both ways. And also, the color scheme looks is perfect for me. And also the. I like the kind of classic gloss finish. Everything's very like classical and nice. um, you know, it's business on top and party on the bottom, as I say. Nice, very yeah, nice. The, the stuff, the stuff's very, very cool. I think um, everyone that tries it has tried it since I put it out the last few weeks out here, and people come out have been like, "How good's that?" I'm like, I know, I think it's <laughs> you know, it's underrated. But I think with the tour van out this year on the on the tour, um, will really make a kind of big statement for Cobra Puma Golf because they've um you know they've pumped quite a bit of money into it and I think guys will start trying their stuff more over to the vans there so the the um supply is easier and getting the stuff's easier on yeah. to it makes a big difference when you can just get something made up on the week. Mm. Well, saying all the right things. Uh, look, you, we're, we're nearly running out of time, but uh, I've I've added in a few quick fire questions just to end uh, our interview on. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, professional sports, golf, you you have fierce rivalries all the time. But who's your best friend in the world of golf? Uh, Connor Sam, definitely. Yeah. Very nice. All right, we'll keep it there. Yeah. Now, clearly, very talented at golf, but do you have any other hidden talents? Singing, no, really. Oh, what well, I'm singing on me, tell you all, a voice. Oh, oh. are we going to hear you on the next? Yeah, uh, any chance now? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I was in Nashville after the season ended at DP World. Um, went to that. I love country music and stuff, so went there for for a little bit, and yeah, uh, love singing and all that. So it's quite, that it's quite is cool. Um, sensational. We'll hear yeah, you on the next yeah. Nile track, then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need, I need you. I need to feature in one of them for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and my final quick one for you: uh, What would you be doing if you weren't playing golf for a living? Um, I would probably work for my dad. I don't know, <laughs> just do something <laughs> like I don't know. I really don't know. I've just always been so wanting to play golf, but uh, in fact, I'd be a singer. What am I talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be a, you'd be in Nashville, living it up the country music style. <laughs> Exactly, I'd be go for a singer. Got it all, got it all. That is brilliant. I'm, I'm so uh, so glad I asked that question now. Um, <laughs> well, look, you we've taken up enough of your time. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, for us. And for those watching and listening as well, um, you actually have a chance to win Ewan's new Cobra driver that he is uh, singing absolute praise for uh, simply by heading over to Golf Magic's Instagram and Twitter. Just search for Golf Magic, uh, where you just need to follow golf magic you and ferguson and cobra golf uk to enter and then you're in with a chance to win the winner is announced within the next week or so keep an eye on the golf magic social media so if you fancy uh, a new driver then that is certainly the competition to enter but uh, once again you and ferguson thank you so much for joining us on the show today no thanks for having me guys good to start nice on you, mate. thank you mate cheers cheers Brilliant to hear uh, from you in uh, a little earlier uh, that we recorded that. Um, Caesar's such a nice guy as well, and a singer. Who'd have thought it as well? So if it all goes tits up in golf, he's got a fallback at least, which is uh, good to know. Uh, but look, we've come uh, rapidly towards the end of our, our first show, guys. So let's end uh, with some of your tips, shall we, for uh, okay. the Hero Cup. Uh, which team you think will win and who will be the top point scorer 
and I want tips for the Sony Open on the PGA Tour as well. So uh, who wants okay. to start? Who's feeling bold? Here she go. Shall I, t- shall I go yeah, first? Go on, Andy. Right. Well, Hero Cup, it's obviously a bit of a 50-50. Um, I'm going to go for, given we've just had him on the show, I've got to say that Great Britain and Ireland are going to going to win. But I think looking through the team, I think they've got very strong Strong lineup. Um, I like the look of Tyrrell Hatton as top point scorer. Um, obviously, there's only going to be three three points available for every player. Um, being a Friday to Sunday, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go Tyrrell. I, I think Tyrrell had a bit of a, a bit of a lackluster year last year, should we say? I think by his own high expectations, not sure he really. He didn't seem the same player last year for whatever reason, but I think he's going to bounce back this year. I think something like this, he'll, he'll certainly get himself up for. He's a very fiery individual. Uh, I think he's made for match play golf. Um, so I'd like to see, I'd like to see Tyrrell sort of lay down his marker. Certainly, I think he's definitely going to be in the Ryder Cup, but I think just to lay down that marker this week and really go, here I am to Luke Donald. Um, so yeah, I'll go Great Britain and Ireland to win. Probably won't be great odds, I don't imagine. Probably five to six. Um, I think I'll just have a little bit too much for, for Europe and I'll go to a hat and take three points. Yeah, um, nice. I, th- I think I'll, just for a bit of variety and a bit of value as well, I'll, I'll go for um, yeah. the European team. The European team, slightly okay. slightly better odds. And I think they're both sort of e- e- equally mm. strong. Um, mm. Yeah, it, 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 again, it should be a really interesting week, really interesting um, which, which pairs which pairs take place, which partnerships form. Um, in terms of top to team point scorer um, for continental Europe, I'll say um, I'll say Adrian Moronk. I think he's a really impressive player. Yeah. Um, got a couple of wins. Um, he won in Australia. He won, um, I believe, he became the first yeah. Polish player Ireland to win as well, yeah. on Deep World Tour in yeah. Ireland. Yeah, so um, I yeah. believe he's eight to one to be the. Uh, uh, we can be found at eight to one to be the top point scorer. Um, so I think that's good value. Um, should we move on to the Sony Open, cool. Harry? Yeah, absolutely. Get them in quick. Um, okay. Well, we, we we haven't spoken about who we've gone for, have we? So we we, we could no. we could double up it, but let's be interesting. Go on, Matt. You, you far away. Um, I'll, I'll begin with Russell Henley. He can he can be about twenty to one um, mm. in the markets. Um, he came second last year, obviously heartbreakingly to Hideki Matsuyama. Um, I believe he won event the event in two thousand and thirteen, the Sony Open um, in Honolulu. He, last season, he had four top tens. Um, he's already won this season in the sort of the beginning of the wraparound. In Markova, um, I've always seen him as a pretty solid PGA Tour player. Um, so yeah, yeah, j- j- just I'll, I'll pick, only pick out one. I'll say Russell Henley, who can be found at about twenty to one. I think that's decent value for a solid player who's already won this season and he's got good form at the tournament. Do you want a second pick? Um, my outsider would be Keith Mitchell, um, who could be he's about okay. about thirty five to one. He's had he had six top tens last season and he's had four, I believe, four top twenty fives in the last five years at this event as well. So that would be my value pick. Um, maybe an each way pick. Um, so that's Russell Henley okay, and Keith nice. Mitchell for me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for two uh, outright win bets. Um, I was looking at Matsuyama. I think he obviously defending champion could be quite strong. I thought Spieth played quite well last week as well. I think they'll, they'll be at the forefront of the betting. Uh, I'm going to go for some players just tucked in behind there. I I like uh, I like the way Tom Kim's playing at the minute. I think he's absolutely burst on the scene, Micka Richard style. Um, <laughs> 14th in the official World Golf Rankings right now. He's nudged himself up a spot from from last week's uh, uh, tie fifth last week. He's never played in this tournament, which might be a little bit concerned, but I think he could play anywhere right now. I think he's he's a fearless individual. Um, you know, he didn't even have a card on the PJ Tour last to start last year you know and then he already earned it at the back end of last year with a victory he's then followed it up with a um a a victory already this season um you know he's first 25th 11th 4th 10th 5th already this you know in this new wraparound season so um i like what i see from him um and i also like i think sung jae im i think he's 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 due a win at the minute uh 19th in the world uh, did miss the cut last in this tournament last year. Uh, solid player, eight thirteenth the last two starts. Um, two time winner on the tour. Hasn't won since the Shriners in twenty twenty one. But no, I think he's gonna um, come out with a with an early season win. So Kim and Im for me. 
All right. Well, you know what? Mm. I've written them down. So uh, <laughs> you get a point for how many you get right. And we'll, okay. we'll keep our own little tally we'll for the up. year. And uh, the winner uh, gets uh, pride, I don't know, or has to buy Absolutely. the other pints. Uh, one or the other uh, but look <laughs> that is it we're done our first show over and out thank you so much uh, for taking the time Matt and Andy thank you so much uh, for listening and watching uh, make sure you're tuned in across golfmagic.com for all the latest news and analysis across the week and then we'll be back with you same time next week for all the reaction and previewing lots more for 2023 get your questions in as well we'd love to hear from you leave them in the comments section on YouTube or you can tweet Instagram or Facebook us just search golf magic but from andy roberts from matt shivers and myself harry benjamin we'll see you next time bye bye all right guys